Well, they finally did it. President Trump has signed the one big beautiful bill into law and the clock is ticking for the residential solar industry. Can the sector survive? And what will the solar company of the future look like? I'm gonna be answering those questions in today's video and make sure that you watch until the end because I'm gonna be giving you my advice on how to reposition your business now for long-term success. The smarter way to go solar. All right, now in today's video, we're talking about what are gonna be the five major changes to the solar industry now that the one big beautiful bill has passed? Uh, and of course, the first major change is a loss of the 30% federal tax credit. Now, here in the United States for the past 20 years, the federal government will essentially reimburse you 30% of your solar system installation cost in the form of a tax credit. So as long as you have enough federal income tax liability, they will essentially refund you up to 30% of your solar system cost out of what you would normally have had to pay in federal income tax. So in, in essence, the system felt like it was 30% cheaper than it actually was because you were able to recoup some of that cost through the tax credit. Now, what this means is people that have been pitched solar on a financial sale, th that financial sale may not pencil out anymore. Uh, typically, you know, the, the salesperson at the time of sale is going to assume that you capture and apply that 30% tax credit to reduce the solar system cost or the, the amount on your solar loan. And typically that's needed in order to get you to bill parity. Now, of course, you have to understand most of how solar is sold here in the United States is on a bill swap. So the salesperson will essentially say, look, Mr. Homeowner, you're already paying $200 per month to the power company now. Uh, I'm gonna set you up with a zero down loan. I'll get you a monthly payment that's right around $200, maybe slightly below $200, that'll fully pay for your solar power system. Now, of course, that projection typically assumes that the homeowner is able to capture and apply the 30% tax credit to reduce the balance on the loan. Uh, and usually it also assumes that the homeowner can qualify and participate in a net metering program for the entire 25 year life of the system. Of course, that's not always the case. These net metering agreements can be much shorter in, act in actuality. However, people who still want solar and battery storage are still going to buy it with or without the tax credit. But what this means is that you're gonna go back to a much more organic supply demand balance of people that want solar because they want it for whatever reason, and then contractors and service providers who are willing to meet that demand. So here's what I expect you're going to see in the next few months is you're gonna see a huge surge of sales uh, in the next three or four months, people that wanna get in while the full 30% tax credit is in effect, and then I expect to see a crash in early 2026. Uh, in fact, I'll just go on the record here. My prediction is that 50% or half of the solar companies that are in business today in the residential sector are not gonna be in business 12 months from now. Now, of course, we saw something similar in California a couple years ago when the NEM 3.0 kicked in, so-called NEM 3.0. You had a lot of people that rushed in at the last minute to take advantage of a net metering program. Uh, and then of course, we saw things pretty much crash after that, sales slowed down significantly. Uh, and of course, there were a number of high profile solar business failures and bankruptcies after those sales slowed down. All right, the second major change I foresee is the end of solar loan companies. Now, I need to take a moment to explain there's a difference between a solar loan company uh, and a traditional FDIC insured bank lender. Now, typically a solar loan company will borrow money from a bank They'll use that money to lend to consumers and to fund solar contractors for system installations. And then they will bundle those loans and sell them off to investors on Wall Street. And, and basically their business model is dependent on being able to borrow and then being able to sell off those loans uh, to, to third party investors. The, the solar loan companies do not hold those loans long term. And then of course, there's the issue of dealer fees. Now dealer fees are fees that solar loan companies charge to contractors and contractors have to pass them on to homeowners in the form of a higher installation price. Uh, and in some cases, these dealer fees are not disclosed. So the, the homeowner may, may look at a proposal and they think they're just looking at materials and labor, not realizing that the price of the materials and labor has been inflated to cover the cost of the dealer fee. Uh, and of course, these dealer fees have skyrocketed in the last couple of years. Uh, when solar finance started, dealer fees were as little as 7%. But recently, we've seen dealer fees as high as 20, 30, even 40% meaning 40% of the total project amount or the total loan amount 
is taken right off the top and kept by the finance company as a fee before the first dollar is paid to the contractor. Now, the other issue that these solar loan companies are dealing with is the expectations or the, or the promises that were made at the time of sale. You know, oftentimes these solar power systems are sold with a 25 year blanket guarantee, meaning that if there's any repairs that are ever needed to keep the system functional, the contractor would take care of it and the contractor would guarantee the power production or the energy production out of that system over the course of 25 years. Well, of course, the, the guarantees are only as good as the paper they're written on because the average lifespan of a contractor is about six or seven years. So these 25 year guarantees are really not, not bearing out in the real world. Now I should say, a traditional FDIC insured bank lender is different, right? So an FDIC insured bank lender, typically that, that bank is lending its own money, uh, money that other customers may have on deposit. So the bank doesn't necessarily have to be able to bundle and package and sell off that loan. They can just hold that loan on their balance sheet if they want to. However, I think what you're going to see is a specific, a specific waiver of liability for system maintenance going forward. In other words, I, I would expect to see on some of these solar loan agreements that the lender specifically is not responsible for any sort of system maintenance. So if, if a solar panel needs to be replaced or if an inverter goes bad, it's gonna be on you as the homeowner to be responsible to pay for any necessary repairs in the event that the contractor that did the original installation goes out of business. And you know, of course, an another issue that these solar financing companies are dealing with is that there, there really is no way to recover the collateral. Right, if you look at like a traditional uh, home loan, for example, if a home loan goes into default, the bank can take the home and sell it and recover their capital. Same thing with an auto loan, right? You, you don't pay your auto loan, the bank will come and repossess the vehicle, sell it off and they'll recover whatever cash they can. But if you, you consider a solar power system, the, the, the collateral really isn't recoverable. Uh, solar installation companies are not in the business of sending their crews out to, to disassemble solar panels for somebody who stopped making their payments. And even if they could, the value of the recoverable equipment is probably only about 10% of what the original retail price of that solar power system is. Uh, again, here in the US, we pay about triple the raw material cost for a completed solar install. A lot of that goes to overhead and labor and commissions and profits. So if you're talking about the actual physical recoverable equipment, it's not even gonna come close to paying back that original loan amount. Today's video is brought to you by Solax. If you're looking for an all-in-one solar and energy management system, then you need to take a look at the new Solax ESS. Solax gives you total control of your home's energy system, incorporating solar power, whole house backup, intelligent load control, and energy management seamlessly integrated on a single platform. Solax uses a modular stackable architecture so the installation can be completed by only two technicians with no special lift equipment required. So if you'd like to learn more information, go directly to the Solax website or click the link in the description below so you can get in touch with an installer or a distributor right away. And of course, as I'm recording this video, there's over 2,000 lawsuits pending against solar finance companies, um, specifically companies like Goodleap and Mosaic, where there was a 25 year loan lent to the consumer, there was a lien placed on their house, but in many cases, the contractor who did the installation has gone out of business, the system needs repairs to be made operational, and the borrowers are essentially saying, I don't wanna make any more payments on that system until you, the finance company, send somebody out here to fix it. So we, we're already seeing thousands of lawsuits piling up against companies like Goodleap and Mosaic. Uh, of course, um, Mosaic already filed bankruptcy. Sunlight Financial filed bankruptcy about two years ago. And I think it's only a matter of time until the other large solar finance companies, uh, companies like uh, Goodleap and Dividend are gonna con come under similar pressure to either you know build a fleet of solar repair and maintenance to keep all these systems healthy where the contractors have gone out of business, uh, or frankly, they, they may just go out of business themselves. I, I don't think I don't think Goodleap has the cash. I don't think any of these solar finance companies uh, properly budgeted for what the cost of long-term warranty service on these systems was going to be. The whole idea was just lend the money, bundle the loans, sell it off, 
Uh, and I think, frankly, that you're going to see that business model fail in a very big way in the next one to two years. Okay, the third major change is the end of one-for-one -one net metering. Now, when we talk about a one-for-one -one net metering program, what we mean is basically your relationship with the power company becomes a two-way relationship. During daylight hours, you can power your home directly with solar power, and you can send all of your excess electricity back to the power company for a full credit. So you're essentially running your meter backwards, earning credit during daylight hours, so that during the evening, when the solar panels are no longer producing, you can pull that energy back in. So whatever excess credits you generate during daylight hours, it would offset your consumption during evening hours, so you can zero out your bill. But what we're seeing now, is especially led by the California utilities under the so-called NEM 3.0, is the power company doesn't want your excess solar. And so no longer are you gonna be able to send them one unit of energy and then pull that same unit back in the evening. Now in many places, you gotta send them four, five, or six kilowatt hours of electricity during the daytime for every one that you get to pull back. Uh, again, power companies really don't have an incentive to buy your solar back at the full price. The, the, the power company business model is essentially they buy cheap at a wholesale rate from a power plant and then they deliver that electricity to you and they mark it up at a higher retail price. They don't want to be buying it from you at the retail price and then selling it to your neighbor at the same price. They want to buy it from a power plant somewhere far away at a much cheaper price, maybe 70% lower price, and then sell it to you and your neighbor at full price. So we already see California has done away with one-for-one one net metering. Uh, of course, California, here in the, the United States, California has really been the trendsetter in terms of net metering policy. So we expect to see one-for-one one net metering programs going away in several other markets. Uh, and of course, what that means is that you're going to be installing battery storage with your solar. Uh, if, you, if you still choose to invest in a solar power system, you're going to want to have battery storage with your solar so that you don't have to worry about negotiating buy and sell rates with your power company. You simply take all your excess solar, charge it in a battery during the daytime hours, and then you run the home off the battery during the evening so that you have to have minimal interaction with the utility at all. And then the next day, the solar panels take over, power the house, and recharge the battery. All right, the fourth major change you're gonna see in solar is that solar is becoming a service business. So what I mean is, First, I think you're going to see contractors that move away from this firm fixed price per watt bidding model. You know, for years, it was, it was very simple. Solar jobs were simply sold on a price per watt basis. How many solar panels multiplied by how many watts per solar panel multiplied by the, the price per watt set by the contractor or the salesperson, and that was how you presented and priced your solar bid. But the reality is every home is different. Every roof is different, every electrical panel is different, and, and then the way that every home is wired inside is different. And as these systems get more and more complex, I think the contractor is gonna have to manage that risk by using a more traditional time and materials or other type of pricing model to make sure that the contractor stays profitable regardless if everything goes according to plan or if in the course of the project there's some, some difficulties that come up in managing the house, the contractor still needs to be able to get through the project profitably if you want that contractor to remain in business long term. Which brings me to my next point, which is I think you're gonna see the end of this 25 year guarantee. You know, the, the whole idea with the 25 year guarantee is that it, it would match the term of the financing because the financing had to be termed out that long to get the monthly payment low enough to match the electric bill. Uh, it also matches the solar panel uh, warranty and the inverter warranty in some cases. But the reality is a 25 year guarantee from a contractor, when, it, when again, the average lifespan of a contractor is about six or seven years, a 25 year guarantee really doesn't make any sense. And so frankly, you as a potential system owner out there, just plan on being responsible for the maintenance of your solar system. There's a good chance that the contractor that you're working with is not gonna be here five years from now, and you may have to take on the responsibility of repairing or re replacing equipment if things go bad. I mean, it's no different than you buy a house. If the air conditioner breaks, you have to pay to fix it. If one of the appliances breaks, you have to pay to fix it. The, the, bank, the bank that gave you a mortgage to buy the house is not gonna fix your refrigerator 
because it's being financed over a 30 year mortgage. It's, it's your responsibility as the owner to keep that equipment healthy. And that's an opportunity for contractors as well. Um, in fact, we've already seen a number of solar service contractors propping up where they specifically focus on doing maintenance and repairs for solar systems that have been abandoned by the original contractor. Uh, in other words, the, the original contractor went out of business and is not able to honor the warranty. Uh, in fact, if you haven't seen our previous video with Nick Sherman entitled Solar is a Service Business, uh, go back and watch the previous video where we talk about this idea in more detail. All right, and the fifth major change to solar after the BBB is diversification, really going from solar to whole home electrification and smart energy management, meaning that you're not just going to be slapping glass on the roof anymore. You know, a couple of years ago, they used to just talk about slapping, slapping glass on the roof and then moving on to the next house. If you're talking about a simple grid tied solar system with net metering and no battery storage. But that's not what we're seeing now. What we're seeing now is pretty much everything is going to batteries. Again, we talked about net metering programs. One for one net metering programs are going away. That means if you're going to be installing solar, many, many more of you are going to be installing battery storage with your solar. It means it's going to be a more complex install for the contractor. In many cases, you're going to have to get your hands in the weeds of modifying inside the house wiring. And then, of course, it also means integrating other smart home electronic devices. Uh, of course, you have EV chargers, uh, including bi-directional EV chargers, uh, meaning that when, when you have the electric vehicle plugged into the system, not only can you charge the vehicle from the home or from solar, but it, with these modern systems, you can actually use the electric vehicle battery as a storage battery for your solar system. Uh, in fact, if you haven't seen our previous video on bi-directional EV charging is here, go back and watch that previous video where we show a successful demonstration of the technology with Ford, Rivian, and Mercedes-Benz electric vehicles. And then, of course, you have all of this smart home energy management technology. You know, software-controlled circuit breakers that only allow certain appliances to run under certain conditions, whether it's how much solar power you have coming in or what the time of day is so you can avoid having to, to purchase from the utility at peak rates. But all these systems are coming together in a much more integrated whole home energy management system. You could have a generator uh, generation in there as well. Uh, it could mean installing heat pumps and other energy efficient appliances. And so really this, this is where the real opportunity is for today's solar contractor, is to be able to evolve and reposition your business, not as just a solar installation company, but as a smart home electrification contractor, offering many services, including solar storage, um, heat pumps, energy efficiency upgrades, perhaps generator installation, and smart home energy management solutions as well. Now, again, it's going to be more complex for the contractor. It is going to be a lot more complex than just slapping glass on the roof, tapping in, and moving on to the next house, meaning that you're going to have to retrain, you're going to have to restaff. Most likely, you're going to have to reconfigure your tools and equipment and vehicles for more of that model. Uh, but as Nick Sherman said in, in his previous video, uh, you know, the, the solar company of the future is going to look more and more like the HVAC service company of today. And it's going to be about how efficiently you can manage that operation, um, how you can maximize billable hours on site, how you can optimize travel. Uh, and of course, making sure that your team, your technicians are properly equipped and trained to deal with all of the additional complexity that these modern systems present. So this has been a discussion of the five major changes to solar after the big beautiful bill goes into effect. Uh, folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos you watch on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and also go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We wanna get this over 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Of course, if you're a homeowner and you're in process looking at solar and battery options for your home, um, this is the time. This next few months, this is the time to do it if you wanna take advantage of pre-tariff pricing uh, and still be able to claim that full 30% tax credit on your system. Uh, so as always, you can reach out to us on the link below here, set up a call with a solar surge expert, or you can just use the free online calculator tool uh, to see how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. But that does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time on the solar surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.